This is a self-turning water wheel. Water drops from the top tank onto the wheel, causing it to turn. The gears on the large wheel mesh with the gears on the small wheel behind this pipe. The turning of the small wheel moves a rod up and down, and this works a pump handle. This causes the water to be raised up and back into the top tank. In theory, the process would then be repeated endlessly. The water would drop and be pumped back up and drop and be pumped back up. In reality, this system would work only for a short time before it comes to a stop. The problem is, in order to be repeatable, the process has to be 100% efficient. However, no mechanical device ever made has achieved 100% efficiency. All one is doing here is dropping water down and then trying to raise it back up. The easiest way to do it, the easiest way to do this would just be to use the same wheel. Have little buckets to catch the water and then have little buckets to raise it back up. At any rate, in order to raise the water back up, you need to have 100% efficiency. 100% efficiency means if one pound of water is dropped, is dropped down, its kinetic energy due to the pull of gravity delivers X amount of energy to turn the wheel around, to turn it down and around. Now to lift the same amount of water back to the top, every ounce of the original kinetic energy has to be captured and used to raise the water all the way back up. Some amount of energy is always lost to friction at the hub of the wheel. No wheel ever made has no friction at all. It does not matter what amount of friction there is, because any amount of friction here means you do not have 100% of the energy needed, or 100% efficiency. You can never raise all the water back up. Another problem is, is that the water return point is higher than the water drop point. This robs the system of more energy, making it even more inefficient. You have X amount of energy dropped here, but you need more energy to raise the water above this point. Where is that energy coming from? The friction at the hub of the large wheel is enough to defeat the process from being repeatable. Some people are easily confused by the addition of the pump system. They think that maybe this will enable it to work, but this is completely wrong. The addition of the pump system only guarantees the failure of the system as a perpetual motion machine. There is still only one source of energy, but now there is five times as much friction. You have friction at the main hub, friction at the little wheel hub, friction between the two wheels, friction crank handle, friction in the pump handle, and friction in the pump plunger. By the addition of the return mechanism, you've guaranteed it cannot work, that it cannot be a perpetual motion machine. Now, this device cannot be a perpetual motion machine in that, in that it cannot deliver free energy for a long period of time. However, what is interesting about this device is that it, it, it can deliver free energy if only for a short period of time. Say the top tank holds one gallon of water, which is eight pints. To get the device going, you have to use X amount of energy to lift that one gallon of water into the top tank. When the device operates, one gallon of water falls down onto the wheel and then into the bottom tank. Let us be very optimistic and say this device is 90% efficient. What that means is about seven pints is will be returned to the top tank. Not all the water can be re returned, but about seven pints of water can be returned to the top tank. Then the process is repeated. Then seven pints of water drop down. And out of that original seven pints, six pints 
are returned to the top tank, and so on. The free energy aspect is explained in the number of cycles. The first cycle is when the original eight gallons is dropped for, past this point. The second cycle is when the seven pints of water is dropped beyond this point. This action can be shown in the following table. For 90% efficiency cycles, after the first cycle, seven pints are lifted back up to the top tank. After the second cycle, six pints are lifted back up. After the third cycle, five pints are lifted. After the fourth cycle, four pints are lifted. After the fifth cycle, three pints are lifted. After the sixth cycle, two pints are lifted. After the seventh cycle, one pint of water is lifted back up to the top tank. Stopping at the seventh cycle, a total of 28 pints of water have been lifted back up to the top tank. 28 pints. To begin the process, we had to use energy to load 8 pints of water into the top tank. However, the device has loaded a total of 28 pints of water back to the top tank. If this is not an example of free energy, I'd like to know what is. However, there's a problem with this kind of free energy. Basically, there is no practical way to use the full amount of free energy outside the water wheel system. Say you want to use the water wheel to generate electricity. So you hook it up to an electrical generator. You put the generator here and you run a pulley to it. The water wheel cannot do two things at once. It does not have enough energy to raise the water back up and also generate electricity. You have to choose. If you choose to generate electricity here, then you have to disconnect the pump system here. Then there will only be one cycle. All the water falls down into the bottom tank. When the water falls, it turns the wheel and generates so much electricity. But all the water is now at the bottom of the tank. There is no second cycle. The device stops working. 